Iron Man 2, the sequel to one of the biggest superhero films that ever came out. At the end of the last Iron Man movie, we see a superhero do something that I don't think I've ever seen a superhero do in a movie. He reveals his secret identity to the world. When does that ever happen? It's always to a love interest, or a close friend, or something like that. Whoever just admits to the world that they're a superhero. It's something I've never seen before and got me really excited for the sequel because you would think, wow, this is gonna go places we've never seen a superhero movie go before. And in some respects, it does. We see the life of a superhero if he was a celebrity. Tony Stark has taken the law into his own hands, is flying around the world and stopping evil wherever he sees it. And the government, in kind of a confusing way, is powerless to stop it. He's more popular than ever, everybody loves him, and of course, he has his vengeful haters. Mickey Rourke is a villain who vows vengeance against Tony Stark because of some wrongdoing that his father did in the past. He attaches these electric ropes to his hands and suddenly he's one hell of a badass mother. But that's not the only thing going wrong. Tony's heart is slowly giving out because of the electronic device that he's using to keep him alive. As put so eloquently, the device that's keeping him alive is also slowly killing him. On top of that, he's upgraded Pepper Potts to take over his business. A new bodyguard named Black Widow, played famously now by Scarlett Johansson, enters the mix. And another big corporation wants to take down Stark by teaming up with Rourke and creating even better war machines. In fact, one of them is even called War Machine. When this film came out, people hated it. All they could do is talk about how god-awful it was. Now don't get me wrong, it still did really good at the box office, but everybody just despised the hell out of it. Does the film deserve such a bashing? Well, kinda, but I don't know if it deserved quite as much as it got. I guess I'll talk about the good stuff first. It does show kind of the price of celebrity. Tony of course loves the attention, but he realizes that he can't escape himself. No matter how hard he parties or gets drunk, all his misery is always waiting there for him. Except now, it's in public, and everybody can see it. When he gets in a fight with a best friend, suddenly, it makes news. And it makes it even harder for him to figure out how to solve his problems. Mickey Rourke as well is a great choice for a villain. He has a wonderful voice, he has a perfect look, he has the strength, he just came off of a huge hit movie. It's an ideal choice. But this does all build up to the biggest problem with the movie. It goes nowhere. Remember that problem with Tony's heart? You could have cut that out and not miss anything. You know how Mickey Rourke is spending most of the movie building these incredible weapons? It's only around a few minutes at the end. Hell, you know how Mickey Rourke is supposed to be the villain in this? You barely see him. In fact, the main bad guy is just some asshole in a suit. Wait, didn't we already have some asshole in a suit in the last movie? Yeah, we get it, big business bad, but come on, we just dealt with this guy. When there is fighting in the movie, it doesn't really connect to anything that big or epic. Iron Man fights with his friend. Well, okay, looks cool, but who cares? Wouldn't it be cool if that was Mickey Rourke there? I mean, they're friends fighting. We know they're gonna make up. We know they're gonna figure things out. Why are we spending so much time seeing them fight at a party? Remember how Stark upgraded Pepper Potts to run the company? Eh, she doesn't like it. She turns it down after a while. Okay, well, what was the point of that then? There's a lot of time dedicated to Tony and remembering his father and what a jerk he was, only to figure out he wasn't really that much of a jerk. Okay, what did that add? Tony still acts like a jerk. And not the fun kind of jerk, just a jerk jerk. He gets drunk and keeps telling everybody that despite what they think, he knows what he's doing. But he doesn't. He clearly doesn't know what he's doing. And it's not fun to watch. In the first film, he did jerky things, but he still came around to using his brilliant mind. He utilized stuff. He was resourceful. Here, all the times he reassures people that he knows what he's doing, it never comes back into play. Thank God they tackle Black Widow a lot better in the future, because she's kind of a wasted character here. So yeah, the film does have a lot of problems, and in the end, probably doesn't really work. But the strength of it does still come from the cool stuff that we like to see in an Iron Man movie. We like to see the technology, we like to see the one-liners, and again, we like to see Robert Downey Jr. doing the role that redefined him. Even when he's being such a pain in the ass, he is still so funny and so enjoyable to watch. Which is why it's such a letdown when you find out that he actually doesn't know as much as he's letting on, and that he is just getting drunk and acting like an ass. So I don't know, I guess it's bad, but I still think there's some really neat things in there that haven't been done yet. Like tackling the celebrity of a superhero who revealed himself, the technology is upped a little bit, and yeah, you do kind of see Iron Man doing the typical Iron Man stuff, there's just not as much as you would like. In the end, it just kind of feels like a distraction to introduce a few other elements in between Marvel movies. 
I guess I feel a little bad for it because everybody praised what a masterpiece the first movie was, and yeah, it's good, it's well done, but it had problems too. And everyone seems to forget that when they look at this one. It doesn't work as a whole, but I don't think it's as bad as everybody else built it up to be. And I guess we kind of know that there's more Iron Man movies on the way anyway, so it's not like this is the last one we would ever see. Now, how would that one fare up? Well, we'll get to that when we get to that. But for this one, it's probably the perfect definition of close, but no explosion.